Hey, what is up? My name is Rubidium. Today we're looking at a behind the scenes of a TV commercial that I produced and directed uh, here in LA a few months ago. Um, it's a lifestyle um, commercial for a kitchen brand um, shot in downtown LA. And we had someone on set doing um, BTS. So I'm gonna kind of take you through the um, process of shooting the commercial and give you some insight to how that all went together. So like on a lot of commercials, first thing I got was the script. Uh, it called for two people, a couple, to kind of come home, um, make dinner together, and then look out at the sunset in this beautiful kitchen. Uh, we were shooting in a showroom, so they had several different kitchens, several different lounge rooms, all with the brand's um, merchandise. So we had to work out how to block and shoot the location to make it look less like a showroom and more like a home. The first thing I did once I got the script was to um, get on Upwork, uh, which is a kind of freelancing site and put up an, um, an offer to get the storyboards drawn. Um, I've worked with lots of different storyboard artists in my career, um, some where you kind of look over their shoulder. The way I like to do it is do my own really bad stick figure storyboards and then send them off um, to a storyboard artist and have them you know, render them in much more detail. There was this guy called Dmitri from Russia who um, was really talented. I liked his other work and it was a really good price. So um, I uploaded my um, very badly drawn kind of scribbled storyboards. He then came back to me 48 hours later with these beautiful rendered boards. Um, I gave him a couple of corrections and then he filled them in. So made them more finished. I had my storyboards. I then brought them into Premiere and animated them to music. In And this helps me time out the commercial and get a sense of how long, if we follow all the shots that are in the script, how long is that commercial gonna be? For back in the TV days, it used to be very much 30 seconds or nothing, but now we have you know, much more leeway with web and branded content to make something that's, you know, 45 seconds or a minute or longer. So I animated this to music, showed them to the client. Um, we had a few more discussions about, you know, tone and shot choice, but then we were able to lock down this animatic that really already told the story. And I, you know, got buy-in from the client about what the tone and the feel and the sort of atmosphere of the commercial was gonna be. Then I got on Backstage, Model Mayhem, um, and a few other sites and put up a casting notice or just contacted people that I thought sort of fitted the bill for the, the man and the woman, the husband and the wife in the commercial. I got a bunch of um, responses back. I set up a uh, audition day where about 20 people came in. Um, I videoed them all, took stills of them all, um, kind of got a sense of what they're, you know, what they'd be like to work with and sent my top three guys and top three girls to their client and said, what's your favorite? I'd be happy with any of these. They all kind of work. Um, once they said what their favorite was and we discussed it and we picked someone, I reached out to the actors and said, um, are you available this day? This is the rate. They were both on board. So uh, then we scheduled a time and I went out and found a um, gaffer, PA, uh, line producer, um, a few other things. The whole commercial was MOS, meaning without sound, so we didn't need a sound package. I just had to send out a call sheet saying, this is how you get into the location, this is where you park your car, um, let's meet at the lobby, go through security and up to the showroom at 7 a.m. So the day arrived, um, we all showed up on set while the actress was in makeup because usually um, female actors makeup takes a lot longer than guys and she was the first shot. Uh, me and the gaffer, which because I was serving as my own cinematographer, um, went through the location, worked out the kind of, you know, blocked out the schedule of what we thought would work best um, in order of shooting and then started lighting the um, spaces that we'd need. Actress came out of makeup. Um, we got the first shot of her walking through the main door. Um, and then sort of like one by one, we kind of shot through our, uh, we went through our shot list. When there were other shots that I thought would work and give us more options in the edit, we kind of did another setup and grabbed them if we had to move the lights a little bit. Um, it was actually a huge advantage working in a showroom rather than a 
location because we didn't have walls behind us. We were able to put the camera and the lights uh, much further back than we would have had we be shooting in a more conventional space. Um, the low ceiling was tough though. We couldn't get much above um, the actors. Um, only maybe a quasar tube or a light stick just to kind of add a little bit of little bit of um, fill behind or a little bit of a hair light. And then we just went through the shot list um, that I had from the storyboards and started to, you know, started to accumulate stuff. You know, we were shuffling the lights around, uh, you know, actors had somewhere to stage, meaning they had somewhere to like chill out when we didn't need them, um, which we didn't really, I think, get to the guy's shots until about 11 o'clock. So he'd been there since seven. He was really cool about it. He was just able to chill out. Um, so I find sometimes the hardest thing to do on set is to ask people to wait, especially if people show up and are eager and excited to work and you just have to say, you know, chill there for like four hours, we'll get to you. But that's, that's the discipline of the job. Um, actors understand that a lot of their job is waiting. Um, at about 12, I had the PA go around and ask everyone what they wanted for lunch order it and go get it from downstairs. Um, we were shooting in downtown LA, so there was lots of great food options. Uh, we kept shooting and the food got there at about one. So we sat down for like half an hour. Um, everyone ate and was able to like, you know, chill out for a little bit. Then at half past one, um, this not being a union set, uh, we went back to work and kept shooting. I think post lunch is always really tough. Everyone's sort of like, tired and their belly's full and it really takes a push to get through um, to get back up to speed to regain momentum and I think that as as a director that's your job um, to to set the tone and 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 get people working and get people excited we had an awesome crew um, I you know shooting on the c200 I was able to get a heap of shots um, really really quickly knowing that I could um, do a little uh, do relights in post, change color temperatures in post, um, zoom in in post because we were shooting 4K raw but delivering 1080p, um, which is super helpful. I could also do um, camera movement in post. I could do pans in the 4K frame in 2K, um, and you know they were they were a lot smoother than I would have got on my own tripod. Get the last shot of the day, which was this um, nice slider shot of the couple waiting at the window, um, and you know. You get four or five different versions. Uh, like all the shots, I find that um, the most important thing for me to know on a project like this as a director is how quickly does the motion or the action have to happen? You know, it's great to let a moment unfold over four or five or six seconds, but if it's a if it's a quick shot that needs to be in and out, you need to know that it's uh, it's really hard in the edit. Um, trying to make things happen quickly that didn't happen quickly on set. So it's good to get variations, do it faster, do it slower. This wasn't a real sync. Uh, it was just a demo sync. So we had to kind of fake it. Um, it didn't pour, I just poured water out of a plastic bottle and we put a, a jug underneath the, the, the fake faucet to catch the water and so it wouldn't flood the showroom. So you get your last shot of the day, you congratulate everyone. Don't let everyone leave until you have releases. Uh, once people go, it's really hard to get them to put their signature on something, but it's much, much easier to do that if they're exhausted at the end of the day and they just wanna, wanna leave. Have the releases right there, get them to sign it. Then we took about four or five trips to get all the gear and the camera stuff downstairs um, to the garage into my Honda Civic. Um, and then, you know, we said goodbye and drove home at about eight o'clock. I'd been there for uh, 13 hours. Uh, but we got what we needed and then the next day I went through and graded all the shots uh, which you know pretty much involved putting a LUT on and then adjusting color temperature or doing some subtle relights and then I sent stills of those graded shots to everyone that was involved in the um, the casting crew. Everyone got to see what they'd done the day before and I like that because I think that too many films um, don't get finished and actors put their heart and soul into something um, or even just you know Put their hard work into something and then never see a result so it's great to say send an email the next day saying thanks so much for working with me here's what we shot this is how good it looked because you know you forget that actors don't get to see themselves um you're the only one that's looking through the monitor <music>
thanks very much for watching. Uh, I will. I started bringing uh, BTS crews uh, on all the shoots that I do, so I can break them down like I do um, on this one, and sort of you know show you guys what I do when I'm not making YouTube videos, um, when I'm out there working as a filmmaker. Thanks very much for watching, guys. I will see you next time.